Hello everyone, and welcome to another Story Explained video. In this one, we'll be looking at the story behind the awesome indie horror game Summer of 58 from Russian developer Emeka Games. After the success of Locked Up and Find Yourself, I couldn't wait to play this one. And let me tell you, it didn't disappoint. Before we start to unpack the story, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. You ready? Okay, then let's go. So let's start with kind of a, a loose plot. So we play as what we can gather is a paranormal YouTuber or a content creator called Alex Morton, who's been asked by his fans and subscribers to visit an old summer camp called Unost for kids. FYI, Unost is a Russian word for youth or juvenescence, if you like. The summer camp was a place where lots of parents left their kids for a few weeks so they could get some R&R. &R. Legend goes that in the summer of 1958, everyone, that includes camp counselors and children were all killed. One child was accused of the crime, a child called Yakov, and personal belongings of the deceased were found in Yakov's locker. This child was never found and the camp was closed ever since 1958. As a result, the camp is considered haunted by the spirits of the victims of the camp. Moving on to 2008, exactly 50 years since that ill-fated summer, Alex arrives at the camp with the intention of staying a couple of nights in order to capture evidence of the paranormal. He nails the door shut behind him so he doesn't give in to the temptation to just leave. It appears right from walking in that weird things are happening here, as we hear noises, bangs, crashes and strange breathing noises. Alex encounters Russian documents around the camp which he deciphers with the use of his Russian to English phrasebook and dictionary. Very handy. Alex notices that a fuse is missing so he needs to find it in order to get the lights on in the building. Before he can do so, he sees the apparition of a small girl who blows out his candles. Alex hears footsteps and seems to get hit over the head by something and wakes up in a previously inaccessible room. He retrieves his camera and gets a note stating that he is not welcome here. Alex finds the fuse in a box and some spare bulbs and manages to get the lights on. Alex goes to sleep and wakes up at 3.07am. After more encounters with spirits, Alex finds a diary entry from the camp director stating that she has been preparing for the opening for three years. She mentions that the child will help her a lot, whatever that means. Alex also reads more of the diary and time passes until morning. He hears noises behind the door and sees another note stating that he needs to leave. He passes a few notes back and forth with the person behind the door and deducing that this is Yakov, states his innocence and mentions that Alex will find any answers he needs at an old nearby hospital. Alex arrives at the hospital and it's not long before weird stuff starts happening here too. He comes face to face with the apparition of a woman who seems very angry. Moments later he finds a closet with what seems to be a dream catcher on it and inside is the hanging body of a woman with bones everywhere. Alex escapes the hospital and goes back to the camp to tell Yakov what happened. Alex leaves and is off to another place where witches apparently used to live. A few days later Alex says that he was in the house and then strange things started happening and that the house became dangerous and he is now trapped. Alex says that he needs to escape and tell the man who hired him and who owns the house that the house is dangerous and he cannot stay there. Alex mentions that a spirit from the hospital has potentially attached itself to him. Alex goes upstairs to see the same dream catcher on the door from the hospital, only to see the same woman who is hanging in the closet in the room with him, the lights go out and the game ends. So that's basically the plot in its briefest form, and now we can get to discussing what happened, starting all the way back in 1946. After the war finished in 1946, children that lost their parents to the conflict ended up at a Soviet orphanage which was run by the military. There are two people working at the orphanage who are heavily relevant to this story, and that is Maria Anatolievna and Dr. Alexei Sergovich. However, after a complaint about the doctor being a black market organs trafficker, the orphanage was shut down by the orphanage director in 1950, and Dr. Sergovich was sentenced to six years in prison. Over the next five years, in 1955, Maria opened a Soviet pioneer camp, UNOST, for youth to stay over the summer. Notes in the game suggest that she was well respected due to her work in the orphanage and parents were comfortable with leaving their kids with her. But for some reason, one night in 1958, as we see from a flashback from Maria's diary, Maria had come up with a plan to gas the children and the counsellors with sleeping gas. But why? Now you remember that Yakov was suspected of killing everyone. Well, it turns out that Yakov was innocent. We learn that Yakov was an orphan himself with no family or parents. He is described as being Maria's favourite and that he trusted her, but Maria had a dark motive. Maria has a son, Ivan. Ivan was misdiagnosed by a doctor and she was determined to save him any way she could. Ivan needed a heart transplant, but she'd given up trying to get help from doctors. Yakov was being groomed for his heart basically, as he was a donor match. All Maria had to do was make Yakov's death look like an accident. 
So, she called the only doctor she knew, Dr. Sergevich. His terms provide a steady stream of children so he could remove one of their kidneys and sell the organs on the black market. In return, he would do the heart surgery on Ivan. However, during a meeting between Maria and Dr. Sergevich, Yakov overheard their plan. Yakov left a note for his best friend Anna in her desk, telling her what he heard and that they need to escape. Maria had placed the one remaining gas canister down, but was greeted by a man wearing a gas mask who had dispersed the other gas canister, knocking Maria out. Yakov returned the next morning to the building, but everyone had gone and he'd been framed for it. So, who was the man in the gas mask? My guess is that this is the doctor. We'll discuss his motives in a bit, but why did he take Maria out and what happened to her? After the orphanage was shut down in 1950, it was repurposed into a hospital. But this hospital was shut down too, shortly afterwards due to budget cuts. It seems that the doctor took Maria back to the hospital. A note from Maria in the hospital shows us that Maria regrets what she is doing by supplying children to the doctor, but that she is determined to save Ivan. A second note states that Maria didn't have time to save Ivan as they couldn't find a donor and that they need one urgently. She calls Ivan her Vanechka, which means God's gift. My guess is that this is where Yakov comes in and the donor match. But we find another note from her in the closet, which implies that she has all but given up on trying to save her son Ivan. So she goes into a closet in the hospital and sadly hangs herself. In this closet is her safe moved from the camp building and lots of human remains. The doctor bought the safe as it had incriminating evidence inside it implicating him and all the children and counselors to the hospital and dumped them all in the closet. This document also states that the doctor had refused to work with Maria and this is likely because only she knew of the agreement so the doctor decided to kill her and all the children so he could traffic their organs, making the doctor the real villain in this story. This explains why we see Maria's angry spirit in the hospital. A worker's note states that they have been seeing an apparition of Maria entering the closet where she died but that they are scared to move the closet in order to check behind it. The note she left in this room also implies that she would return at some point. So, in a bizarre twist, which was also slightly predictable, Ivan died years ago, in 1950, evidenced by a death certificate in the safe. Maria had unfortunately driven herself to despair and was so desperate to save him that she simply went crazy. This is also another reason why the doctor killed Maria, as he realised that he was working with an unstable individual who was suffering from delusions. All these years, Yakov had been hiding out in the camp building, living in the ventilation shafts due to fear of capture and arrest. He was friendly with the spirits in the building, and the spirits would scare off people who tried to break into the building. At some points, we hear a creepy breathing, but finding out that Yakov is living here too makes us realise that it was him breathing all along. Yakov was the one who hit Alex over the head during night one. Yakov was desperate to leave and go to the hospital to find evidence to prove his innocence, but was too scared to leave in case he got caught. Yakov knew the conspiracy all along and wrote a cryptic poem of sorts. I believe this is deciphered as the courtiers, which are usually advisors to a king or queen. These could be the counselors. The fool is the doctor, as he poisoned everyone. He basically said enough is enough. Uh, poisons the court, who of course are the counselors, and the king is Maria. And the fun is, I guess, the potentially the business of black market organ trafficking. I could be wrong here, but this seems to make the most sense in my mind, at least. Alex went back three weeks after escaping the hospital. It's likely that Alex went to the authorities and presented them with the evidence and arrested the doctor for the crimes, effectively exonerating Yakov and allowing him to live freely and without fear of arrest. There are many ghosts we see in the game, and here's who I think they are. We'll start with the obvious one, I believe this is Maria. The small girl we see by the candles, I believe this is Anna, who's Yakov's friend. A small boy running across the corridor, just he's probably just a victim of the gassing. The girl who got bullied and picked on is the spirit we see in the bathroom, and I believe the floating girl is one of the counsellors who also died in the gassing. So, remember that I mentioned the note from Maria stating that she would return at some point? Well, I think that when Alex took this knife from the skull in the closet, Maria's spirit attached itself to the knife. It has been widely accepted in the paranormal community that spirits can actually attach themselves to inanimate objects. And then at the end, we see that Alex carried the knife with him to the final investigation location. But anyway, that is it for this one. It was a really great game, and I hope you did enjoy this video and it answered any questions that you did have. Uh, link to my gameplay for this game is at the top of this video right now. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support. But for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.